please clarify papa punya is cruel of action thoughts as a result of participation in traffic of life now what is this traffic of life the traffic of life means there are three things we transact with you receive a stimuli reaction happens and you response you respond to the world these are the three transactions that constantly happening in life this is what is referred to as traffic of life so when you are transacting with the world you are transacting from these three aspects only you're receiving the stimuli reacting to that stimuli internally and you are responding back to the world so all your actions fall into these three categories only so when you are transacting with world you transact with two motives you receive a stimuli you interpret that stimuli you respond back to the stimuli all this falls under two broad motives selfish or unselfish with the selfish motive when you perform an action you get papa demerit as a consequence similarly when you work with the unselfish motive attitude any one of the tra 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 transactions that you have then you have the punya so it is a it is a constant cycle don't take one unit isolatedly that's that is where you get into tr 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 trouble isolatedly if you take only receipt of a stimuli punya papa only in reaction to the stimuli punya papa only response to the stimuli punya papa then you are missing the whole thing the three put together is one unit now you can't break that into pieces and try to connect it so when you are transacting with the world you are transacting with these three things the transaction has three steps to it when all the three steps happens only the transaction is complete you can never have one of it in isolation that is impossible so you are not transacting with the world if a person without any stimuli from external world if he is thinking of his own which is what we call as hallucination he is hallucinating he is not transacting with the world see so you can't isolate these three things don't think in terms of isolation that's where the confusion could have occurred so all these three goes on all these three as a unit happens with one attitude to refer to all the three in one we take the last one which is the reaction to the world which is what we call as action your your re 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 response to the world which is the third one not reaction response so receipt reaction response generally when we use the word action we refer to the response part what is understood is the response part is there means backing that response part is there is a reaction there is a stimuli that's understood so response is equal to action action performed with two motives what is driving your action is the desire in the manner in which you are going to be pursuing the desire is the motive that is a link between motives and desires no action can be performed without a desire not possible 
without a desire to teach it is not possible for me to come and sit here and speak there is a desire you see there is a desire for you to learn that is why you are sitting here otherwise you will not be sitting here there is a desire to play that is why a sportsman is playing that particular game so any action the driving force of action is desire remember that first point second point is the way in which you are going to pursue that desire is where the motive comes into picture which is another aspect of the mind that motive is of two selfish and selfish now you can understand very easily selfish means what what is in it for me what i am going to get out of it what is the mileage i have what is the name fame power position status money family that's it this is the these are the things that we are seeking for me the moment i bring in this idea for me i'm doing all this there i am having a selfish motive attached to the pursuit of my desire when i do like that then i get a a subtle consequence arises out of that what is a subtle consequence subtle consequences the papa imperceptible consequence the fact that it is referred as imperceptible no way that you can perceive that you can't see it but we understand the presence of it through the effects exactly like none of us have seen autumn nobody has seen autumn from the effect we understand the presence of autumn isn't it we infer the existence of autumn is inference not a perceptual reality not because we are, you know even a physicist is not perceived the autumn no one can see autumn but we infer the presence of autumn by what from its effects from the effects we understand same way from the effect of certain experiences that is happening to us in life we infer the presence of punya and papa and from where that comes that comes from the transactions how you have transacted with the world with what motive you have transacted with the world so what drives your action is that desires with what motive with what as a fruit that you are going to be pursuing the desire what is your final agenda with which you are going to pursue your desire is where selfishness and unselfishness and the third one selflessness comes into picture but generally we refer only these two selfish and selfish first understand selfish and selfish because it's only selfish and selfish produces punya and papa the selflessness is you do not carry any motive behind action neither there is a selfish agenda of what is mileage i am going to get nor there is an agenda that how much people complicate life without this knowledge right now that i have gained this knowledge with this knowledge i am able to see how people are suffering without this knowledge so to relieve them from their suffering i go and teach this is unselfishness right 
when I perform with that motive, still I have that same desire to speak. The desire to talk is the foundation. See, now without which no action can be happening. There has to be a desire for it, a liking for it. If I have a, if I hate speaking, only difference is how strong that desire will vary. The strength of the desire may vary, but there has to be that desire for the action to happen. Now, I'm speaking to you. I can do it with what is a mileage I'm going to get, or I can be speaking to alleviate the sufferings of the people. Why are you complicating life? Why can't you just understand? This, this is not the way it can be done. It's very simple. And the moment you see that, you do with that attitude. What is it? That is called unselfish action. Then what is selfless action, sir? Selfless attitude is neither your suffering triggers me to speak, nor the mileage triggers me to Then why do you speak? Because today is Thursday, 7 o'clock, I have to start. Of course, I can stop at 8, 10 also. That's okay. What are you, you are expected to speak? Speak. That's it. What happens to you and what, have, what is the outcome of this to me? What is the outcome of this action to you? Doesn't make any difference. Are you all getting convinced with this knowledge? Are you all, are you all enjoying the class? Are you all getting educated? Are you all getting benefited? Not my issue. Am I getting anything out of it? It's not the issue. Then why are you speaking, sir? You are expected to speak. 7 to 8, speak. This is called a selfless attitude. Almost bordering mission. Switch on the tape recorder. It will run. If the tape is for 30 minutes, it will run for 30 minutes and stop. If the tape was for 45 minutes, earlier we used to have no, that 90 minutes tape, 60 minutes tape used to come. You know, those days. Now you put it on, it will play for 45 minutes, exact 45 minutes, it will stop. Almost like a machine, but not mechanically. You operate like that, without that mechanicalism bringing, coming into picture. That is selflessness. But selflessness is not the purview here. The purview here is, how do you get Punya and Papa? Why we are discussing about Punya Papa there? Because we were discussing about the theory of reincarnation. In reincarnation, you are moving from one body to another body. When you are moving from one body to another body, what all the things that you carry, what is that you take with you? What is it that you leave and what is it that you carry? In that list, we have added this Punya Papa that you do also, you carry. That also sticks. I repeat what all care, you know, goes along with. 17 things you carry with you. The 10 Indriyas, Jnana Indriyas 5, Karma Indriyas 5, 10 Indriyas and Pancha Prana. So 10 plus 5, you've got 15. Then you carry Manas Buddhi to 17. The 17 the jiva folds and takes it along with him. When he is taking that along with him, along with these things, 
few also get stuck and go along. It's like one of my, my colleagues, you know, they pack their bags in the airport. The bag was taken away. And they didn't know what to do. Why did you know? Bag was taken out. And kept separately and they said, you come there. Police check. Security check. You go there. They said, there is something inside. They said, there is nothing inside. We have taken out everything. They said, no, 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 there is something inside. They, they don't know what to do. Finally, they said, okay, open. She is opening her bag. A lizard jumps out of it and goes. The airport became a big, you know, this Bombay airport is a pandemonium. You have to catch the lizard now. Because she has kept that, you know, suitcase on in the loft. Was not taken out for months together. After about one and a half, two years, she is taking it out. No, by then, this, you know, there's a family of lizard inside, living happily. Now, he didn't check all those things. He just took it out and opened and, you know, dropped everything inside and left. In the airport, he opens. The lizard jumps out and runs. It gets stuck along with you. See, she didn't carry it. She didn't intend to carry the lizard, but the lizard sticks. You can't wriggle that out. When you perform this, actions with selfish motive or unselfish motive, the consequences of those actions stick to you. You can't escape. Similarly, the desire part also gets further reinforced in you, which is what is referred to as vasana. It gets more stronger and deep-rooted in you that also sticks with you and comes. So what you are carrying is the jiva intent to carry only the 17 with him. He is not, he's not interested in carrying these things. He says, I don't want all these things. But by de facto, these two also sticks. The karma phala, what we call this punya papa and the vasanas also stick to the jiva and it travels along with him. Along with that, you can't say him because jiva has no gender. There's neither male or female along there. The jiva travels. What it is now, we don't know because gender is only for body. Remember, Jiva, there is no body. There's no male or female. Body is only male, female. Jiva has no masculinity or femininity with it. It sticks to it. So what it carries is that 17. But these two also sticks along with that and takes. So in explaining that, he said, how do you develop that Punya Papa? How that comes to you? It comes to you through this process is accrued, how this gets accumulated, how it gets added on to your account is depending upon the motives, there is an imperceptible consequence. What is the proof of that imperceptible consequence, Allah, we can't ask. Because it cannot be given a proof. The only authority we have for that is this. Then we can infer it to an extent. Like how we infer and understand the presence of water. Even to understand the higher aspects of science, mathematics, economics, how many of us understand how the stock market function? Hmm? How this is functioning? No clue. But you need training. If you have gone through the systematic training, then you can understand. Similarly, 
if you have gone through the systematic training in the field of philosophy, religion or spirituality in Vedanta, then you will see the logic behind it. Till such time, what to do, sir? Take it on good faith only. There is no option. This is called a Shraddha. I will not go through, I will not put in that necessary systematic effort. But you should explain to me. That will not work. Because even if it is explained, you will not be able to understand it. Why? Because the preparatory training is not given. Preparatory knowledge is not there. That is, that is true for any field of expertise, any field of knowledge. All, all of you watch cricket match. How many of you can distinguish between a top spin and a googly? Hmm? Dusra, this fellow says, Lara says, I can read Dusra from the hand of Murlidhar. Sangakara says, Thank God Lara is playing. Says, because he says, I can't read it. The wicket keeper is not able to read, but this fellow says, I'm able to read it. Or can you? You need the training. Unless you have gone through that proper training, it is not possible. Till such time, what to do, sir? Gulp it. Give the benefit of doubt to those people. That's all it is. See? So, Punya Papa, we all, we give benefit of doubt to those people. At the same time, those who have gone through that systematic knowledge, understand it. So far, we have not found a single individual who has gone through the systematic training for a period, finally coming to conclusion, no. So far, it has not happened. Therefore, we say, there is no reason we have for us to disbelieve. So, there is an imperceptible consequence. That imperceptible consequence is what is referred to as Punya and Papa. And those two things also stick with you and go. When the jiva takes off from the body. So in that context it is given. 